Hey, hey, what's up, Cloud Scholars? I hope your day is going well. My name is Kieran Trust. I'm your host, and I'm here with another how-to video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to clean up inactive guest users in Azure. The premises of this video is security. We want to keep our environment safe, and we want to make sure that people that have access to our environment need access to that environment, and it's a valid access. So. If you work in IT now, or if you're looking to work in IT, I'm pretty sure there is going to be a scenario where you will have, or you already have had um, requests coming into the service desk or help desk, whatever you want to call it in your organization. And you're getting a request saying, hey, we need access to, we need to give access to this vendor or whoever um, in your organization. And the thing about it, you really should have a centralized point where people are coming in. Uh, let's just say, let's pick on HR today. HR says, hey, we need to give access to Mary Beth, whatever, um, so that this way she can get into our systems and you give them guest access. Now, what happens if Mary is no longer has access, right? Um, that happens a lot where, you know, HR may not even know themselves that the third party vendor that they have um, utilizing resources, the company's resources is, you know, has left, um, they may have gotten, you know, uh, fired from their job. Who knows? But you're going to have an account there that's open for a cybersecurity threat, right? A hacker to just go in and, you know, take over that information. Or, you know, a lot of times people are using the same passwords. If they get hacked on their personal account, that person might say, hey, you know what? Let's see where they work at. Check on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. I see they work here. Oh, they do business with them. Okay. And then they just, it's a, it's a full-fledged you know, bloodbath after that. They're just getting access to everything because they've used that same password in all types of different scenarios. So what I want to do is show you exactly how we're going to do um, access reviews, but also we're going to um, utilize um, dynamic groups to pull in those guest users. And then secondly, once you pull in those guest users, we need to do access review. Now, in order to set this up, we need to have an Azure AD Premium 2 license. And then you also need a global administrator, user administrator, or identity governance administrator to create reviews um, within um, the access rules and identity governance. So on the screen right now, we have a bunch of users in our Azure Active Directory. We have some on-prem, some that are just completely in the cloud, but we have two guest users. So we have Damon Targaryen, which is a guest, and then we have Reyna Targaryen, which is a guest. Yes, I like the show Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm a fan. So what we're going to do next is I need to go into directory and I'm going to go to groups. Within groups, what I need to do is I need to create a, um, a dynamic group um, so that this way that I can pull in my guest users. So I'm going to say new group. And then under group, I need to keep it as security. And I'm going to say guest users. You can call it whatever you want. Um, uh, guest users group. I'll call it that. And we're not going to give any assigned to any group and a membership membership type. We're not going to we're not going to do assigned. We're going to do dynamic because what happens is assigned is specific static uh, members. Dynamic is uh, users that uh, get pulled in automatically from Azure. Um, based on whatever query you want to create and I'm going to create a query as well And then there's dynamic devices, which we're not going to use and that's basically the same thing as users But just for the devices. So here we are It says add a dynamic query and when I click on add a dynamic query What I'm going to do is I need to make sure that I'm doing this dynamic query that this way it filters out and says Okay, let's get everybody who is a guest and also the account is enabled because remember what we want to do is we want to use that group so that this way we can apply that to the access review. So if I come here to choose a property, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for user type and I'm going to say equals and I'm going to say guest. And then I'm going to say and account enabled is equal to to true. Once I have that information in there, I can also come over here to validate rules for preview and I'll add a user. I'll just add one of my users and I'll just say, let's start with the queen, Reyna Targaryen. 
and I'll click on her and I'll click select. And then you see status, view details, and it says user type equals guest, user can, and then it says user type, and it's saying that everything is validated. So now I can come here to save, and I'll click on create. So let's let that create really quickly, and then we'll come back and see exactly which users get populated into that group. All right, so here we are. We have our users here. Um, where it says guest users, it has been created. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna click on guest users and let's see, it says two members are in there. So let's see what the two members are. And we have Damon Targaryen and Reyna Targaryen, cool. So we have those and as you can see, I just created any crap just to kind of just allow that name to get populated. So we have those two users there. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go into identity governance. Here in identity governance, what we need to do is we're going to create uh, access review. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to access reviews. I might have one already there. Um, and then we're going to click new. And we're going to click groups. And we're going to select groups. And the group we're going to go to is the guest users. So now we know everything in there um, is a guest user. And then we're going to say, we're going to come down here and guest users only, which is perfectly fine. Um, so if you had another group that you wanted to do that with, you can, but this a, you can kind of just easily populate it and you can leave it that way. And then we're going to say inactive users tenant level only, and we're going to say days inactive and it's up to you, right? So if you want to say uh, every 90 days, 30 days, 40 days, whatever you want. Um, but I would hope that you wouldn't go that long because that is a very long time to go 90 days uh, without any inactivity. So we're going to keep it to 30 days. And then what we're going to do is here in the access reviews, there's a couple different things that we can do. So you can do a multi-stage review. We can have more than one person look at it. We're going to keep it simple and we're going to say uh, select users and we select reviewer. And I'm going to come over here find myself I'm gonna be the reviewer for this one and duration in days let's just say we drop this to it doesn't really matter um, let's say four well, we could keep the five it doesn't really matter um, and then review occurrence we can do this for monthly because we said we're gonna do it for 30 days and then we can have the start time we can start date uh, October 24th and then end date we're just gonna say never we're gonna click next so what the next thing we're gonna do is just auto apply results to resources. So we wanna make sure we're doing it that way. If you, it's, it's really up to you, but you, it, I would recommend doing it this way. And then also it's up to your organization of how much you know about your organization. And it says, if reviewers don't respond, we'll say take recommendations and it's gonna be uh, block users from signing in for 30 days, then remove users from the tenant. So, I mean, if, you're, if you haven't signed in for that long, then, you know, it's kind of like, well, why, why is your account still here? And it's going to be no signing within 30 days because that's the dates that we chose. Um, and then you can say email notification, justification required. I'm not going to do any justification required. Email notifications and reminders are going to be there. And then you click on review and create. So we need to create the name of the review. And the name of the review is going to say... Uh, we're gonna call it um, inactive guest review. I like to do underscores. If you haven't noticed, I'm just, you know, I used to program. So underscores is always that and plus just spaces always cause problems. And I'm gonna click create. And that's pretty much it. You have uh, first created the dynamic group and then second created that access review so that this way you can drop that in there and then you also you'll you'll know that hey you have all your guest users, so that's a that's a way of really knocking that out and keeping your organization secure. So uh, one thing I want to say to you is that um, please, if you if you found this inf it, the, the content of this video to be informative, please smash that like and subscribe button. You know I do take some time to do research and you know come up with different scenarios that I think is going to be beneficial 
for you as um, a scholar and then always for you as someone who's working in the field you might have run into a situation that you're thinking about how do I go about doing this um, my thing to you is just always learning you know I've been working in IT for 15 years and I, I, I just have an aptitude for knowledge and just always learning so you know if you if you like my uh, information and I mean my videos please you know like and subscribe also if you um, have any questions please you know leave a, a comment or something that you're learning in Azure that you, you have want a better understanding and you would like me to make a video about it I, I'd be more than happy to help you out on your journey to becoming that Azure expert so as always here at Cloud Scholars my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert thank you and see you next time